What's poppin' everybody? This is the cartoon kid, Ray Rawlins, and today we're kicking it down the final stretch of the Christmas cartoons marathon. You know, 25 days we're going strong. We on day 20, and we're reviewing the Scrooge McDuck Christmas called Mickey's Christmas Carol. So before we get into this episode, man, Mr. Alex Payne, what happens in this episode? I mean, th- this episode is pretty much Disney's telling of the Christmas Carol, which, listen, everybody knows what the Christmas Carol is, but to give something really simple for the three people that might not know what it is. No, no, no you got it wrong. It's one person. One person watch who might not know. No, no, I'm talking about the three people that might not know the story. You know? I'm not talking about the audience. I mean, that's what, <laughs> like, 80% of our normal demographic. But anyway, so... Um, Basically, long story short, a very selfish, rich old man gets persuaded to be very kind on Christmas from being visited by three ghosts. And for my first impression, I'll have to say that for some reason, and I don't know why, um, the music at the beginning of the, of the show, oh, yeah. like, like it made me feel like I was in for watching something special. And spoiler alert, <laughs> and spoiler alert, it it really was. What's your what, what's your first impression? Well, I actually listen. You you brought it up, and I wasn't gonna say anything, but I'm gonna say it. I was like, man, fuck this damn music. Let me rewind past this shit. That, that was a long ass opening. I'm not even gonna lie to you. Nobody wanna hear all that fucking music, man. Listen, I said in an early Christmas review. I know that's very, um, I I would say counter reactive or whatever. I'm the cartoon kid. I'm supposed to be talking about Christmas cartoons. But here I am saying, fuck Christmas music, man. Get that shit out of my face. I heard enough of it. I'm not fond of Christmas music at all. Okay, I'm not I'm fond really of not. Christmas music at all. But I honestly felt, I mean, no, no, listen, I agree. The music went on a little long. But I feel like the music was really good for the, was really good and sat, like fit the mood and everything. For the no, no, first, yeah, of course, of course, of course. For the first um, minute or so. It did go on a little long and that's probably my only gripe with the entire show. But like you said, um, if, I'm going to give a little spoiler alert too. I like you enjoy this story very, very much. I enjoy this cartoon, man. Everybody knows the story of Charles Dickens Christmas Carol. And to see it animated or, or retold by Disney, it's very dope. Like, I, I fuck with it hard. So, I guess we can get into moments right now. What are some of your standout moments of this episode? Let's get into it. Well, in terms of comedy, my two standout moments was when he, when he was talking to the people who, when Scrooge was talking to the people who was trying to get money for the poor, and he was like, well... If I give you money, then they wouldn't be poor anymore. And yeah. If they're not poor yep, anymore, yep. then you can't, you wouldn't be able to have a job anymore. So I wouldn't make you not have a job on Christmas. Listen, he turned himself, and this is, I gotta say this, comparing this to the Bugs Bunny episode of the Christmas Carol retelling, <laughs> it's just like they do such a good job on making this dude look like such a fucking asshole. Like, I, that's one thing this episode does. And, and like, like I said, we only ran across two uh, Christmas Carol retellings in this marathon, but it's just like, man, they did a, such a good job of making him seem like an ass, okay? Um, <laughs> and, and Scrooge, he definitely, like, flipped the script on him. He he made the poor people seem like the bad guys, in a sense, and made himself look like a <laughs> good guy. Like, yo, I'm not going to throw you guys out of job. No, 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 no. So I ain't giving shit. So, no, nah, you know what? <laughs> He shut the door on their ass. You gotta mention too, um, like how how uh, Scrooge he, uh, treats Bob Cratchit, and it's just like, man, oh, I, this dude is. He, listen, Cratchit seems to be like the happiest motherfucker in this episode. I mean, obviously, but it's just like, yeah. man, it's just Scrooge denying him of coal, and I'm surprised dude gave him the day off. I thought he was gonna get fired like uh, Porky Pig did in the Bugs Bunny rendition. So. I'm yeah, like, you could really tell the difference, the difference he, in level of meanness. <laughs> yeah, it, it was it was toned down a, a lot. But he said, you know what, I'm going to dock you for half a pay now, half a day's pay. So, 
I got to say, man, see that really nice guy. And he's treating him so nice. He ain't saying shit. Normal people will talk back to him. Man, fuck you, Scrooge. I ain't coming in. No, man, fuck this job. I'm leaving, ho. And this dude is basically doing dude's laundry, yo. This dude tossed him a bag of laundry. He said, here, another bundle of shirts. Boom, just tossed him at his ass. Like, he his slave. And it's just like, man, Scrooge, you a piece of shit. <laughs> but I, that's one of my standout moments. I'm going to let you continue on with yours. Uh, my other standout moment in terms of comedy was when friggin' when um first first of all I just want to mention something because I never really read the story so the friggin' when Jake Marley came through the thing and he was talking now oh yeah 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 it the, it made that friggin' moment in Foster's with Bob Marley twice as hilarious to me just See, thinking funny- back on it. No, I, I, really I thought of it reference. too. <laughs> I thought of it too. Um, I only seen, like I said, um, during the Bugs Bunny rendition review, I seen the Christmas Carol movie in like 2009. I get the main premise. I fucking forgot like all the little side jokes and shit about that shit. And it's just like this dude mentioned uh, Jake Marley at the beginning of this episode talking about some, yeah. He basically got his fortune off of him because he left him some money to buy him a tombstone when he died. He said, I buried his ass ass. He ain't buying no motherfucking no tombstone. So, <laughs> and, and that adds to Scrooge's level of assholishness, man. Which, I mean, hey, I'm all for, I guess. But I gotta say, though, Scrooge, you can see he gets the first little sign of changing his ways when he sees his buddy Jake Marley. He's like, man... Yo, Scrooge, if you keep acting like this, you're going to be like me, man, forced to walk around wearing these damn heavy chains and whatnot. And I I got like to when he's getting ready to exit and he already told him he's going to be visited by three spears. He gets ready to exit. And Scrooge, I think, did the only nice thing he ever done before he went through his whole (laughs) metamorphosis, if you want to call it that. He's like, hey, Jake, watch watch out for that. <laughs> busted his ass, yo. <laughs> He's like, watch out for this. <laughs> so, listen, one good deed for Mr. Ebenezer Scrooge in this episode. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Man. Um, I, but, oh, um, I gotta mention this too. I gotta mention this too. I, I know I'm still in all the moments, but I, you, if I was gonna mention it, you probably were. So, when when the first ghost came about, right, from gross to Christmas past, and talking about his love life and whatnot. This dude basically gave up a good freaking woman because she was, <laughs> hey, this bitch hit him with, yo, I got, um, are you, if you want to keep this honeymoon cottage, man, um, you know, you're going to have to marry me. I do. So what? Are you going to marry me or not? And this motherfucker's like, you're late on your rent. So I'm foreclosing on your, <laughs> on your cottage. So in other words, hell no, I want my money, ho. So <laughs> I'm like, yo, Scrooge, I fuck with you. <laughs> I fuck with you, Scrooge. And listen, he right, man. He wants his money. Ain't nothing wrong with that, man. He wants his bread. Pay that man his bread, you know. So I can say Scrooge, although it's fucked up. It's very I feel like you're up. really not taking. I feel like you're really not taking the moral of this show. <laughs> no, no, no. I am. I, really I am. Listen. Show. No, listen. I am. But see, here's the thing. I can see where he's coming from. That's like, you owe this man money, yo. Living in his house, you owe him money. Y'all ain't married. I mean, yeah, I guess you could say y'all boyfriend and girlfriend, but he ain't looking at that way. He want his bread. He want his gold. Come on now. Um, yeah, I'll you really didn't say... take the more from this episode, but I will say this. We'll, we'll talk about it later. Wait, what's some more of your moments? <laughs> but my my other moments, like my moment is when they showed him, you know, there at the bar hiding off in his corner, really. You know, I yeah. felt like I felt like they played the emotion up really well for that whole scene. No, yeah, I mean, yeah. Oh, hell yeah. I mean, they did in, all, in a lot of it, especially, and this is the other moment I mentioned, especially, like, when, you know, the, the ghost of Christmas future was showing him, like, the dead boy's grave and all that other shit. Like, yeah. Oh, man. Like, they played the, they, the emotions and everything and the music was, it, it, everything was just very well done. And that's. With all I'm, I will mention. Kids always hit hard, man. 
kids kids always finna hit motherfucking hard, yo. And you know, Scrooge was not immune to that man. He said he heard that Timmy was gonna die, crash his son. He's like, man, no, oh, man, I didn't want that to happen, man. No, oh, no. So, like that, honestly, that obviously led up to his him having his metamorphosis once again. So, obviously. I you gotta love the fact the part where Scrooge changes and they're getting ready to throw him in his grave. So I'm about some yeah, you know, this is a funeral of somebody who never had any friends was mean to everybody, da 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 woo Scrooge's like, Man, who's this grave for? And then the ghost is like the grave for the richest person in town in this cemetery. This motherfucker sent his ass down a large ass hole, obviously leading to hell. And he's like, No, no, you see all that damn fight. He's like, No, 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 I'm gonna change, I'm gonna change and obviously he freaking wakes up. He's in his room and he goes through the metamorphosis and he's going around giving gifts to everybody, man. Everybody, kids. And I got to listen. This is one thing about Scrooge. Like you really see it in this in this episode, man. He just keeps giving this family a whole bunch of gold coins like, oh, that's not enough. Twenty's not enough. OK, uh, 30, okay, 50, all right, 100, boom. It's like, listen, I don't know how much that shit's worth, but I'm pretty sure you made day Christmas, boy. So <laughs> that's what's up. Um, And then he obviously visit the Cratchit family, you know, hook them up, make sure they have a good Christmas, gives toys to everybody and whatnot, and gives Bob Cratchit a raise, which obviously was very due for. And long story short, that's where you see him actually complete the whole change, man, which is the whole premise of this story. So I really enjoy this. We're getting the view portions now. I really enjoy this episode or this show rather. Um, fantastic storytelling. Honestly, good, quick retelling of the Christmas Carol, man. You, know, you got to love it. Good and quick. Instead of watching a fucking hour and a half, probably two hour movie of the goddamn Christmas Carol. It's nice and quick in this little animated Disney retelling, man. So, got that little Christmas fix right there. You can see Scrooge going through the whole entire change of from being a mean asshole to a nice guy in the end. It's 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 surprising how quick it happens, but you know what? It made sense. And I'd even argue to say it made way more sense than the Bugs Bunny uh, version. Obviously, you, you would argue that they add their own little flavor onto it and whatnot. And I like the fact that it had a, a big time difference. Like, obviously, they had a full on 24 to 30 minute episode. Um, so, obviously, they were able to accomplish a lot more with that time. Saw the three ghosts. You saw him go through this change. You saw him be an asshole. You saw him become a good guy. And it, it, it's, it's a good damn story. Obviously, jokes are freaking hilarious in this episode. We had a lot of moments to talk about. And it was it was just overall a very enjoyable episode, in my opinion. This obviously has to be one of the best shows, in my opinion, that we've reviewed so far for this marathon. We're getting into all the classics in these last five days. We got Twas the Night Before Christmas. Um, we got the Charlie Brown Christmas. We got the Grinch Who Stole Christmas. And I, I want to say we got one more that I can't. Oh, Santa Claus is coming to town. We're talking about all them classics here in these last, last stretch of this marathon, man. So I'm really interested to see what takes the cake over here. But in my opinion, my humble opinion, which really don't mean shit technically, but for the one person who's here and listening, I'm going to give this episode a nice, I'm going to hit it with an 8 out of 10. I really enjoyed it. 8 out of 10. What about you? Um, to be honest, I feel like the... I feel like the friggin' lo- the song being too long at the beginning is the only flaw I could give this episode. It, okay. like i felt like um pretty much i felt like pretty much everything else about it was pretty much um perfect i guess you could say if that makes any sense like the emotional parts were super emotional the music was really great the comedy was really great i i would i would say the only um i i'll say a nitpick is Maybe some of like maybe the the voice of Christmas past could have been more less happy if that makes any sense. Okay. I, mean, okay. I don't know. I don't, like I don't know the the original story, so maybe that's very accurate to it. But um, like I just felt like it could have been more, I guess, wiser if that makes any sense. But um. Right. Right. 
I don't know, not like I said, the, the emotions were on point, the comedy was on point, the music was on point, the visuals were really great. Like I feel like everything about this episode was really great. So I'm a, I'm I'm going to have to hit it with a, a 9 out of 10. Ooh, listen. One thing I can say about us, we're not no professionals up here. I wouldn't even consider us pundits. But it's just like, man, it's very rare we'll hit it's very rare I'll hit anything with a solid 8 out of 10. Or even a nine. The only thing I gave a nine was uh, the mask from Courage the Cowardly Dog. So honestly, that says something for you to give it a nine. Like I can see you're more critical than I am. But overall, this is a damn good episode, man. So that has been our review for Scrooge McDuck, Mickey's Christmas Carol. I give this episode a solid eight. And my partner, Mr. X Payne, gives this bad boy a nine out of ten. There y'all have it, man. That's been our review. This is the Cartoon Kid channel where we talk cartoons and we do it daily, baby. This is the 25 Days of Christmas Cartoons Marathon, and we're in the final stretch. Drop your comments down in the comment box below. Tell us what you think of this episode. Tell us if you liked it. Tell us if you hate it. Tell us if you got some other stuff that you want us to review beyond this marathon, man, because we are sure listening. And with that all being said, we will see you when we see you. Peace out, everybody.